Hi Jonathan, thank you very much for joining us. So you're a director at Hampleton Partners. Can you tell us a little bit more about what your firm does, please? Hampleton does a really simple thing. Effectively, we sell small technology companies to big technologies, and we call that M&A advisory. It's really important in technology because the rate of innovation is such that in order to thrive and prosper, firms need to have very active acquisition strategies because they cannot innovate quickly enough internally. So how would you say Hampleton Partners differs from, say, any other M&A firm out there? I think we have one very particular differentiator is that all of us at Hampleton Partners have built multiple technology companies and sold them. Uh, so we have a very high degree of empathy with people who may be selling their firm for the first time, which is um, a very complex and also can be a very emotional experience. In terms of the deals that you're working on, are you working on anything specifically here in the UK? Well, the market's very, very active in the UK at the moment, and there's some clear, really, really hot spots at the moment. Some of the hot spots are um, augmented reality, virtual reality, AI, cyber security, which should come as a surprise to nobody. Mm -hmm. But some very interesting areas where traditional industries are having to move forward to a new paradigm. So we're seeing an enormous amount of activity in automotive, uh, particularly around electric propulsion and self-driving vehicles, and also a new wave in manufacturing, which we call Industry 4.0, which we are seeing um, some profound uh, renaissance, particularly in the north of England. Okay, that's interesting. And I have to ask, do you foresee Brexit impacting Hampleton's business in any way? Well, we're not seeing anything at the moment. Um, in fact, in many ways, it's actually quite positive because there is certainly interest in companies buying into technology companies which have offices both in the UK and on the continent. So I hear you've just opened uh, an office in Frankfurt. Is that in relation to Brexit at all? Uh, we have, yeah, we have opened in Frankfurt. It's actually not primarily to do with Brexit. It's simply a response to the amount of business that we are now doing in Germany. However, there is a nuance in that. What we are noticing is that companies that have offices both in the UK and on the continent are now attracting premium prices because it's one way that incoming companies feel they could de-risk against Brexit. Okay. Um, and in terms of any advice that you would give to any tech founders or tech entrepreneurs out there who may be considering um, a merger and acquisition, what would you say to them? I think you know, if you are an entrepreneur and you are founding a company, you need to think from the beginning that mergers and acquisitions will be part of your business strategy, um, either to sell or to buy. And we represent most firms uh, on the sell side, so we are selling companies rather than looking out for companies to buy, although we do do that as well. Um, it's really, really important that you do a number of things when you're building a business. Uh, most important of all is build a strong management team around you because um, firms that are acquisitors perceive a single founder running a business with 100% shareholding as a risk and you want to de-risk any acquisition. And in terms of like looking ahead, what kind of trends do you foresee in the tech M&A environment over the next couple of years? Well, I think what is very interesting is that there are, there are plenty of tech firms buying other tech firms, but again, I think one of the most interesting things is where we are seeing firms that have come from what we think of now as traditional industries, such as retailing, um, having, having to move very, very quickly. So certainly in retailing, Amazon absolutely rules the roost. Everybody's scared about their next move. All their competitors are trying to keep up. Uh, you know, we've seen Walmart in the States make five acquisitions in the last 14 months, uh, buying Parcel recently in New York, which is a delivery service. And we've seen Carrefour, which is the world's biggest supermarket, buy Rue de Commerce, uh, which is an online platform. And we're going to see a lot more of that. So we're going to see companies buying into unfamiliar spaces um, as, as disruption continues to occur. And we're going to see that in financial services as well. I mean, clearly London is a is a, is a fintech hub, um, lots and lots of early stage companies, but you know, technologies like blockchain will fundamentally change the way we think about uh, transactions and money payment and, and so on. It certainly looks like we're looking at a very few interesting years ahead. Oh, I think we are, yes. Thank you very much for your time, Jonathan. My pleasure.